Making it up as we go. What oh, up, yeah. Lee? Got some June. You know what? Um, some Juneteenth coming up. Oh, and Alan leaves. Look at that. Oh, geez. He's, well, like, he's already leaving. No representation. Oh, thank God, we got some representation back. <laughs> oh yeah, it was. It was about to be a very sad wet guy podcast without me. I, well, that and West goes Juneteenth coming up, and you walked away. Yeah. Like, oh no. Oh God, he's protesting. <laughs> But in all honesty, it doesn't really, you know, we we kind of use Alan as a token a little too much, I think, sometimes, because that you really do. doesn't doesn't affect Alan quite as much as, you know, the African-American population. I get a lot of, uh, you know, I mean, you don't see it a whole lot, but I get a lot of, like, Indian Pakistani, you know. Well, I think yeah. it's the beard, mainly. Mm, I guess. I mean, and, mine is usually, I mean, it's a little scraggly right now, but, like, it's usually well kept now that I can go back to the barber and stuff. Gosh. But, I, mean, I Look, and I, I I know the words are getting ready to come out of my mouth and are going to sound kind of racist, and I'm okay with it, so I'm just going to continue. And Indians and Pakistanis, a lot of them have very, like, white features, and, and when they are Americanized, they speak in a totally just normal, quote-unquote normal, Americanized yeah. accent, and you have all of that going on. And, you know, it's a lot, yeah. a lot of the pillaging in the, uh, you know, the, a lot of white guy pillaging in the South American region, a lot of white guy pillaging in the Indian Pakistan region. So I can see why they might, you know, more of a modern, modern American imperialist Central American, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but yeah, either way, either way, it's the same state, you know, just new flavors. <laughs> That's right. Just come up. Just, white guys just spicy. White guys just repackaged imperialism a couple times, and they were like, yeah, look, oh, no, it's different now. It's totally different. It's not rubber in Africa this time. It's fucking indigo in America. Come on, guys. It's different, kind of. Have you, have you, <laughs> it's like it's like the, the electric Mountain Dew flavor Slurpee. You know, like it comes. It comes around. It comes, <laughs> and you're like, yes, that's great. That's, we love it. And then after a while, you're like, it's so sugary, though. Should I really be drinking two of these a day? And then you kind of back off and repay. Then what comes out? Like Fanta Orange. And you're like, well, fuck me. I'm gonna need one of those. Just repackaging it. What what was the flavor of Mountain Dew? Slurpee? Electric? Electric something. Electric Boogaloo. That's probably a Mountain <laughs> Dew flavor, right? <laughs> it's not, well, it's not, just the, not just a breakdancing film. <laughs> They had the code red as well. That was a, a, yeah, a delightful go. twist. Like kind of a cherry Mountain Dew. By the way, a uh, little fun fact for you. Uh, Mountain Dew was actually the name of Moonshine, and Mountain Dew, the soda, is actually supposed to be a mixer for uh, hard liquors. Mm. That's what it was originally intended for. I mean, if you do not want to taste whatever you're trying to get drunk on, Mountain Dew <laughs> yes. is pretty good right. for it. Right. Like if, like, if you're just like one of those broke college kids, you're like, well, got this bottle of schnapps. Fucking just pour some Mountain Dew on it. It'll be good. I've done rum and Mountain Dew. Or did. It sounds right, awful. But oh, yeah, it probably worked. Or yeah, I mean, for, Here's for the what thing. we're trying to do. I've done every combination of anything out there. I remember sitting in a garage drinking tequila and cranberry juice because I didn't have anything else to mix it with. <laughs> and I just didn't feel like sitting around. I thought I was too much of a lush if I just sat and drank straight tequila. So let's just mix it with some of this. It changed the color. So it's got to be good. Um. <laughs> Me and another one of our fraternity brothers uh, are like late night drink as things were winding down was he always had a uh, jug of Sunny Delight and a handle of Montezuma tequila. Uh, and it was it's terrible. It's just real, it's plastic bottle tequila. It's fucking <laughs> worse than Jose Cuervo. Uh, Montezuma delicious. Because that shit... It was bad. I don't know why that was our thing. I also love that the, they, the tequila company was fully aware of what they were bottling and called it Montezuma so that in the morning when you shit your pants, it was officially Montezuma's revenge. <laughs> yeah, you just making a little makeshift uh, uh, screwdriver, you know, because I, because I order now I order yeah, screwdrivers really with tequila. But uh, I remember okay. one I was with this was short lived, but I was with some people uh, and we were we weren't chugging. But we were uh, we were sipping on grain alcohol and then chasing it with uh, chocolate milk because that's the mm -hmm. only thing we had to 
to chase it with. So a little, and it wasn't like we were taking shots, but little sips of uh, grain alcohol, and then a a nice sizable thing of chocolate milk to just to like, blah, blah, blah. and it wasn't so much like this is it was disgusting, but it was more so like by the time I was leaving this person's dorm. It's like, all right, going to go to my dorm. It's like doing the chicken leg dance about 100 yards. Like, ooh. It's a, it's a little, I've never been this drunk before. I've been drunk before, but holy Toledo. I, I think I'm, I think that's the first time I had a stroke. I've had many since on the show, but that was the first time ever. <laughs> yeah, as, as, a, as a young man, uh, definitely not of legal drinking age, I had an evening where I just did shots of 151 for some reason. Uh, actually, like, fell off a curb, which is, I, I don't think, possible, but it is possible, because I did it. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, don't do that, guys. Boys and girls, don't drink 151. Put it in your jungle juice, though. I see a lot of modern-day jungle juices that don't have enough grain alcohol or one or things that could kill you. Put those in there. That's good stuff. Well, I'm going to go ahead and um, cut a little corner off of my man card. And I don't know why I'm doing that, but I'm going to show you. Yeah, so for you visual like listeners law. out there, yeah. Ain't no and laws. for you non-visual Ain't no laws listeners, I got a, Ain't no I, laws when you're drinking claws, baby. <laughs> well, so, okay, and this is the thing. I I walked around the beer store, and I kept looking at it. And I was like, I want to try those. And then I was like, no, don't do that. You're pussy. And then I kept looking around at more craft beers, and I turned around like, they got white claws right there. You really want to try one. It's just seltzer with alcohol in it. Yeah, Why don't you true. just get it? Quit being a pussy. So I finally walk it up to the counter and I slam it down. I'm like, hey, yeah, my wife sent me up here for these. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. God, don't be, just don't be so scared of your masculinity, man. <laughs> yeah. well, where did where did that come from? Why I, is it a thing? It's this whole beard drink. Here's he, I came to a realization about around 10 years ago now the thing is i still like beer i don't mind those seltzers uh, and this is not a man thing this is just the fact that it's it's it, they're too sweet after about two or three i get a built up kind of carbonation where it's it's just it's not it's not even enjoyable to drink them anymore but the the shandies and all those things during the summer delicious but my realization was is that i think that i went through the ringer of just so much dog shit drinking beer that it, there's no man card to be pulled. I can drink whatever the fuck I want now. I drank gallons upon gallons upon tubs upon kegs of your bushes, your yeah. bu- bud bud uh, ices, your fucking uh, Genesee cream ales, uh, Beast Light, <sighs> Beast Red, and Beast Ice. All of them. I drank all of them. I don't need to. I, I can drink whatever I want now. Boom. Yeah. There you go. Put I've, those white I've claws seen... and say I'm ooh, I'm buying these. I'm gonna drink a couple tonight. <laughs> I've, I agree. I agree with Wes, man. Like I think me and Wes, we have a similar uh, thing where we've we've seen we've seen the deepest, darkest caves, and we've been on on the highest mountain tops uh, in, in terms of alcohol. You know, what I mean, like like he said, you're, you're, you're kegged keystones and bushes. You know, you're and then and then you're like barrel aged select wild sours, delicious, exquisite. Stuff. Yeah. So yeah, we could drink whatever. I will drink a motherfucking white claw in a heartbeat at the pool, my friend. And two, uh, if you if the cart girl has some truly fucking cherry lemonades, boy, <laughs> you, I will get them. Absolutely. Yeah. They're so good. So you yeah, put, by the way, this you stuck that man claw right claw, back in there. Don't worry. You're good, yeah, baby. Thank you. Like I said, I just, you know, little, snip a little corner off, just you know, for my own pride's sake, I guess. But no, only two grams of sugar in these things. So they really don't have much of it. It's just it's literally just water, and I get the natural lime. And what I've been doing at uh, late night, I'm like I pretend I'm mixing a drink, and I've got those nice, like really big round ice cube maker things, uh, little silicones, and so it makes an ice cube about half the size of your fist. And I put two of those in a highball glass, and I fill the white claw up, and then I slice me a lemon, and then I. Squeak, Squirt the lemon in there, or I'm sorry, the lime, and then I uh, I, I, I rim the, the top, and then I dump the lime in there, and I uh, sit outside, and I stare at the sky and wonder what what went wrong in life. <laughs> Mur, that's called class. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's okay. No. Thank you. <laughs> Ooh, you had, uh, Alan, you had mentioned about uh, not and I, I don't know where you're getting this information from. There's not enough uh, jungle juices out there anymore that, that have uh, or right. don't have. All right, so... I be I you know I, I'm a fan of TikTok. I'll okay. be watching. I, I watch TikToks for lots of entertainment, and 
Yeah, there have been. I've seen a couple, uh, like Gen Z jungle juices. Like I saw one where my man put in like two fifths of vodka and like a small pint of grain, but he had like like two of the huge jugs of high C, probably like four ginger rails, like two liter ginger rails, like two more uh, two liter sprites, and like I was like, dude, no, you the, the ratios are. That's impossible. Uh, it's, you need a handle of fucking grain and like a handle of Rickaloff, and you'll be fucking fire yeah. on your way. Everybody, fucking five dollars a cup, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, and then what, what, a, couple, right. a couple of those giant uh, plastic things of the pa- of the powder. Yeah, yeah. Then, you don't even need that high C shit. You go get the Kool Aid powder jams. Uh-huh. Uh, get you some Country Time lemonade powders. Fucking money. Pink lemonade too. Fuck yeah. that. <clears> so. Shit. This were this uh, this two stories come to mind, and I, I one we had to stop doing this. When I say we, the same fraternity we were, you know, that you and I were in. But I think this is before you got in. We had to stop doing the grain alcohol because some young thing got annihilated, and then started saying that we uh, we 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 uh, we put drugs in the you uh, altered the uh, yeah. yeah. The, the, and we, we me and Sherm ran into this young lady at, at a bar at Highway. And um, she's going on. She's like, no, no, I've never felt that way before. And I was like, well, look, you're 100 pounds soaking wet. Your lips were red. Your teeth were red. Your your upper and lower lip were red. Your shirt had, had stains like on it. like a child with two hands. Uh, yeah, and you were blasting through grain alcohol. And she just went... Or no, no, I know how I, I know how I feel when I'm drunk. I wasn't that drunk. And I was like, do you understand how much money it would cost to drug a party? Do you understand how much money we don't have? Like, I'll show you our fucking bank account. We can't afford that much fucking MDMA. Okay. And we, we were drinking it. What do you think? We're impervious to it. We've drugged it enough to where like, it doesn't work against us. Just, right. Like that's the, the, that's a good point. Like we could show you the money. Like, we well, there was no I mean yeah we probably could have bought a whole ton of it uh, but then we wouldn't have been able to throw parties all the time and that was kind of our thing yeah. so yeah, <laughs> it I, just it was counterproductive to what we were trying to do there was no rational well, people don't okay. understand that that like this I mean this is actually heavier than most light beers it's five percent per can whereas what you have just described that you've dumped into there is something that a good old Appalachian asshole who's making just liquor in a co- copper still in the middle of the woods would be like, who we got in here. <laughs> yeah, bud. That's true. It was, uh, dude, like... We served it in those giant fucking like what? Like 30 gallon fucking buckets that ho- that have like the rope handles. Yeah. That's what it came in. You just dipped on in there. And we get, had... get, keep your hands out of it. There was a, there was a cup for, for servings. What yeah. if we're not fucking animals. But you listen. You fill your fucking natural light cup up with the bush light cup that's inside of the tub. Okay, keep your hands out of it. Yeah, we would we would use a uh, beer bong tube into a faucet, and we would churn it with a mop handle. Just get it nice and nice and nice and stirred up there. After that, <laughs> after that just sliver of a description, because I know how disgusting it is to make jungle juice, especially the second batch of jungle juice when you have to reuse what you made the first batch in. Um, can you believe that we're still fighting a pandemic? <laughs> that we're, st- we're still worried about some mystery airborne illness when we've all drunk from this sludge-filled factory that is a fraternity house? Yeah. Yeah. And what I was going to say was after there was no reasoning with this young lady, uh, I just told the bartender she was underage. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure she's underage. She's an idea. (laughs) They kicked her out. I was like, woo. Yeah. And and (laughs) actually party. And at that same bar, I don't know if it was before or after that. It was what it was before classes started. So everyone goes up. It's still summertime. Everyone has money. You know, know, there's no classes. You're getting bombed every night, every day. We, we we went to a party. We went to this place, and then I said something along the lines. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, we got some stuff back. We're gonna have a two o'clock. We should go there." I left at like one fifty, and got to the house and realized I just blew a bunch of smoke up everyone's ass, and all we had were two handles of vodka. So I was like, "Okay, all right, gotta gotta batch, gotta <laughs> yeah, batch together something." So all, I just poured that into a tub with. Uh, like the gel- jello powder, not even the fruit punch mix powder, <laughs> jello powder and water, and stirred it up. 
I remember people were like, it, there was whatever combination. It was like lemon, lime, uh, <laughs> something else, and a cherry, and it made purple. And so I was like, hey, so what do I owe you for a cup? And I was like, ooh, this one's on the house, buddy. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> just, just take a cup. It's all good. Yeah. Just and, have fun, man. Yeah. And it got drank. It got at every last drip drop. Fucking going. Animals. People are like, this is getting, it's getting chunky. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, it's like salt water and vodka. Like, this is congealing. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, welcome to the middle class holes in a trip down memory lane with with booze, and that's it. Yeah, I, Mer, to to round it out, you, I've drank with you a number of times, and ended up in places where you know we we were sucking down leftover beer, room temp beer that had been left out. And be like, hey, who's are these? Nobody. All right, yeah, mine now. <laughs> Some room temp, ro- <laughs> two room temp rolling rocks. Mm-hmm. Yum. <laughs> I think I realized that I was an adult when it was me and your brother, and and he was just drunk, and he's like, "I was got to finish, got to finish my beer." I'm like, "No, you don't." I'm like, what do you mean? I was like, "We're fucking twenty five years old. We can buy more. We don't have to finish these beers. If you got half a beer left." Guess what? You got everything you wanted out of that half a beer. You leave that right there on that coaster. Let's hit the road, buddy. Let's go. Come on. And that's what I realized. Like, I don't have to I don't have to fight and scrap and beg and pray for this elixir to land on my lap anymore. Yeah. I'm a grown ass man. Hell I can yeah. buy as much beer as I want. As much as my wallet will allow, but that's a lot though. That is a grown up thing to do. I don't. We did talk about here on here where how like I, we, me and Kelly went out to eat once and I slammed that beer out of sheer like I can't leave I can't leave this beer that I fucking ordered and probably vomited my entire dinner up yeah. uh, right next to the car in the parking lot. Mm. That's exactly what that was. Like I was too young and I was like, well, definitely just ordered this fucking twenty four ounce land shark in a decorative glass. I'm not going to leave that sitting there. Uh, so yeah. I'm with you. When you can leave a beer, you know you've made it. I will say, though, it, yep. it is also impressive. If you have a a party or a small gathering, I haven't had what I would consider a party party here in quite a while. I When when Mayweather fought uh, Conor McGregor, yeah. I would say that was a party. We I probably had 50 people here. But you'd be imagining how many people, I think, uh, adopt that I don't need to finish this beer mentality. Uh, and not because they're like, oh, I'm a grown up. I'm just going to leave this half drinking, half drinking floater right here. And you clean up the next day. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Pouring out gallons of beer, assholes. Usually with cigarette butts jammed down on them, too. That's usually the, the, the topic. Yeah. The fucking, the hot point. Just tons of fucking cigarette butts. Erware. Erware. <clears throat> um,. So this was posted on the official middle class holes Facebook page uh, to today. Yeah, or wait, hold on, Tuesday. Maybe. Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, I did actually hear about this. Uh, a Rogan had brought this up, and I don't remember who the guest was, but it had been mentioned on his show about three or four years ago. So there's a while ago where, and this only says they taught uh, monkeys about gambling, but I also, and I might have to read this uh, a little bit. A little, bit, a little bit more in depth. I thought they taught him about currency. They taught him about the the, uh, the actual like uh, what the purpose was of currency and how it could be traded for goods and services. So the gist of it is is that once they figured this out, nearly the first thing that they did, uh, the females monkey female monkey started prostituting themselves for for more money. And this is uh, yeah. this is wild. This is absolutely fucking crazy. Do they give the uh, the type? I mean, it's a what's a uh, Catchapin, cat, uh, capuchin, C A P capuchin monkeys, yeah, capuchin monkeys. I, like I, thought, the same I thing, thought they eventually the same thing that Ross had on went up to, Okay, I thought they eventually went up to uh, to, to actual chimpanzees because um, yeah, basically the basics of the story are they taught monkeys that if you get this amount of chips, you can trade this amount of chips for this amount of whatever, and so then they started gambling to get more chips from the sucker other monkeys out of the chips so that they would have more chips. And then the female monkeys were like, hey, all these monkeys want to fuck me, so I'll just ask them for chips. And then, yeah, so prostitution and gambling immediately clicked within seconds of teaching primates, primitive primates, uh, the the importance of cash currency. 
that's uh, there. There has to be some PETA people just going just absolutely fucking bananas. Wait, what? What? They did what? The female monkeys did what? But yeah, I feel like the PETA people would be the same. The my body, my choice. So you know, if my choice. I want to take four of your ruples for five of your penises. <laughs> ruples. They even said, they said that there was a kind of a a Robin Hood monkey one. There was one one rogue one that went in, stole the entire dish of coins, and threw it across the lab, resulting in chaos. That would have been a fucking hoot to see. God, gosh, man, I, it's just I love experiments with primates because we are primates and you know when you kind of take away a lot of the frontal lobe like you, when you lobotomize humans you realize that we're not that far away from our animal brethren i mean because we still have prostitutes it's probably the easiest way for women to make money in the world because all men want to basically have sex with all vaginas um when it comes to gambling all men and women want to take little bits of it and make bigger bits of it and it's just it's so simplistic and it i feel like the only reason civilization exists is it's it's man fighting these urges at all costs like this can't be right we have to figure out a better way and our stupid dumb big brain tries to figure out a way to just to suppress all of that just animal want and this is what we have now yeah. And I, I, I also find it, they, they said that once the females figured this out, there was little kickback from the males. It was almost like, oh, oh yeah, here you go. Thank you. I, I won't I won't have as full of a stomach, but whew, I have a bigger smile on my face. Thank you. <laughs> but, but you, but you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Damn girl. <laughs> Damn girl. Nice. That's a good one. <clears throat> That was a good slip there. <laughs> so what do you, in there. Alan? What do you what, what do you make of this? Uh, I mean, you're 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 an animal guy. You watch a lot of Animal Kingdom. Uh, does it shock you in the I least bit do. that this was figured out? I don't know what what. Uh, I don't. Know, it doesn't give you any timetable, but it says it was relatively quickly. That could mean a lot of things. But does it shock you that this was figured out by mm -hmm. the primates in a timely fashion? Nah. No. No. No, it's, I think it's uh, the the main, I guess, from a biological standpoint, it's just interesting because then, I guess, how low down the evolutionary ladder do species have sex for, like, shits and giggles? You know what I'm saying? Because, like, clearly this is, like, in in 99.99% of nature, fucking sex is for making other, uh, more of us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Humans do some sex for fun. That's nice. You know what I mean? How low down the down the totem pole do we get? Like, what kind of monkeys? How low on the monkey scale do we do we go until they just stop stop fucking for money hmm. or pleasure? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's what I find fascinating. I'm like, huh? Even though they're not like high high thinking like us, they're not humans. Obviously, they still are like, hmm. Sex is good. I'll give a, I'll give up uh, monetary or fucking physical possessions. To do the sex with that lady monkey, you know what I mean? Like that monkey, that male monkey had the same thought that sometimes we do. We're like, yeah, I just I'm trying to have sex with her. Yes, <laughs> like you know what I mean. But I mean, I know it's every comedian's joke about dating, but I mean, isn't that basically what we do up until we find our for life mate, so to speak? Is we just figure out ways of burning through cash to get in that ash. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, going out to dinner, going to the movies, going out to this. Hey, this person has, I think, deep down inside, somewhere in that amygdala, they're like, okay, this this one's spent a lot of their goods. and They've spent a lot of their money on me, which equals they've spent a lot of their time to earn that money on me. Therefore, I will now give them the pleasure response that they've been looking for this entire time. Yeah, this might be a uh, sexist hot take. But uh, for being a patriarchal society, we really railroaded ourselves into making ourselves work for for the booty, like a lot. You know what I'm saying? So like, I know, and that sounds really bad, but like, I'm, I'm, I'm arguing the, the feminist perspective here. Like, if you're saying that we're just all gross pigs that want to do the sex all the time, but well, we we established a system that makes it very difficult for us. You, so I feel like, yeah, maybe. It's not like that. 
Uh, <laughs> no, it's I no, I I really think if you break it down, it's actually fair. It's fair trade, well, yeah. really. And I, that, that sounds terrible to say, but like it's fair trade. Hey, you've got this thing that I desire, so I'm going to give you all of these little things that you desire, and in return, you're eventually just going to be like, ah, okay, <laughs> you can have that thing that you want. I'll give it to you. You've given me so much, so I'll give you this one thing, it's right? Be, because <laughs> because they don't want it either. That, that's. They don't want that. Couldn't possibly be, right? Nope. Nope. I don't know that it's that they don't want it, Wes. The thing is, is I think that it, as we've all heard from comedians for decades, is that the pussy has the power. So that they don't, they want it, but they don't want to give it away until they see how much you're willing to spend on it. And then I think deep down, they start to kind of conjure in their brain like, huh, he's willing to give up this much for this little. So I like this guy. And I'm saying this is all happening under the surface subconsciously. So how much more is he willing to go if I give him a little bit more? I guess and more. the moral of the story is that our dumbasses can't fucking shake our monkey brains out of our human brains enough to be like, oh, well, I could just, you know, be a, be a decent person and treat women with respect and not just be like, give me the booty, bitch. Like, because uh, we, you know, a lot of us do that. Uh, so, yeah. No, I, I get it. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a crazy topic. Now that we get into it, I have a thought experiment for you, Wes. Think of someone. Well, you know, we'll we'll go with middle class, so somewhere in our 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 range of uh, of monies. Okay. okay. What what would be the average date or amount spent before you get there versus a rich guy and how quickly it takes him to get there? Well, okay. So so I uh, we have a listener. I'm not going to name him by, name him by name. Who says he's got an over? We well, used to uh, had a, had a, a a cutoff of three dates. Okay, but what did he give away in those three dates, or what did he purchase like, the, the, in those three dates? I don't know. I mean, assuming dinner, movie, night out, et cetera, et cetera. I, I don't think it was like anything extravagant. It was just a date, a couple, and, couple hundred bucks, probably. And if, right? if, if if three if by three dates she wasn't uh, affectionate in more than a pecky kissy kind of way. Uh, then, then it was like, all right, this, uh, this isn't for me. Now, I'm not saying I agree with it. I found it interesting. He oh. he put it in terms that I was like, oh, I mean, that's you. Okay, cool. Well, I guess what I'm getting at is I feel like the person with lesser money ends up spending more of their percentage of their overall wealth in order to get to 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 the prize. Whereas a guy that has a lot of money, like, finds some like super hot trophy chick, and it's just like. Hey, you want to go for a ride in my helicopter? We'll land on my yacht, and then you'll bang my brains out, and then and then I'll take you back and dump you off, and we won't see each other ever again. See, this, and that seems to work, yeah, because the monetary establishment is just so much so that she's like, I can't deny any of this. I want all of these things. I, I shall reward you immediately. So what you're saying is what I think you're saying is is that there is a level of booty inequality that matches uh, the wealth inequality in our society at this time man that's fucking deep bro yeah yeah man think th- oh, let's let's, let's close let's close both those gaps give booty away more freely along with higher wages and fucking living conditions right i, I like about, it man i feel like it's good it's good th- for everyone think about this harvey weinstein okay now All right. it, it took him talk about it decades <laughs> decades decades to get taken down right uh-huh. Think about all the power, the potential earning power he wielded to all of like the hottest starlets that have ever existed in Hollywood over our entire lifetime. It was given up to him. I'm not saying willingly, but it was kind of like, Grr. there's a lot of teeth gritting going on. Like, begrudgingly. Right. Yeah, I think I like it. <sighs> Fine. I was gonna, because he had so much to offer. I was going to say, I, doing uh, editing last week's show, uh, when I got front and center with Al Davis's son, I kept saying like, Jesus, how is how is he how is he having sex with that woman? How is that possible? God, that guy looked like fucking the Shermanator reborn. Termin yeah. Yeah. You ask how. Very sweatily and very gruntily. I suppose. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Aruga. Um but, yeah. but uh, what are you gonna say? You okay, Murr, as a father. Uh, and you and you had said uh, about the the I guess the 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 chart of about money spent versus time spent versus uh, 
wage and class and et cetera, et cetera. All that stuff summed up into how much time and money it takes for a certain uh, a, a male in a certain class to achieve what he wants. This might be a good opportunity. Next time a helicopter's flying over your house, explain to your young boy, hey, that guy's getting laid tonight. Life ain't fair, buddy. All right? Bam. I smack, I smack him on the ass. What's oh, I, going on? I don't know. I, maybe, maybe you don't do that. Leave that out. Okay. You definitely say what I, I wait. You say everything before that. Okay, I'll get up. I'll wait till he's fifteen, and then I'll give him the, the that talk. Okay, mm-hmm. so we got another eight years until we have to really deal with that. If that doesn't inspire him to get rich, I don't know what will. That's fair. <laughs> but yeah. then, it, but then again, see, he loves animals, and you know what? Women love animals, and they love men who love animals. They so do. if that's the route he wants to take, then I'll be like, all right, buddy, become a zookeeper, and um, you will have all the hairy women you want. Yeah. And maybe by that point, uh, when you go to zoos uh, in enclosures like this, you can watch female monkeys prostitute themselves out to the male monkeys for a admission ticket, of course. It's behind yeah. the curtain, though. It's not the uh, not the normal Ooh. zoo stuff. Yeah, it's the <laughs> poppins of quarters end. There's like yeah. a there's a dirty bald guy like standing by the bead curtain. Yeah, like, hey, hey, bud. hey bud, can I see your ID? <laughs> see your ID? Are you 18? I don't, I don't care. care. Get on, get on in there. Yes. Oh boy. <laughs> um. So this was a this was a hard hitter right here, coming via uh, Daily Star. That is that UK. Yeah, it is. Mur, yes. you have, my God. Yeah. That's fine. I, I think I, it's like I think it's like trash too. Well, okay, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Why do you continuously hate on where I find the stories for you? Huh? Okay, not America doesn't always have everything going on. Okay. There's trash everywhere. You're right. And I appreciate the fact that some of these European stories are worse than the stories that I'm capable of finding in the States. They always oh highfalutin, holding their pinkies out, drinking their rumpled Stilt skin out of their bottles, like fuck them. They they deserve some trash too. So I would prefer that the next time you're like, oh, this is from the UK. Look at these assholes. Good thing we conquered them. Fuck them. Anyway, continue. I apologize. You're absolutely right. From here on out, I will acknowledge in a good way that this is, <laughs> this is coming from the Daily Star, United Kingdom's very own reputable news source. Uh, proof humans can reproduce on Mars as scientists discover sperm survives. In space, so apparently, it was uh, deemed that it was, it, this could, this was previously thought to be impossible. Sperm God. couldn't survive in space. Now I don't know if that meant in actually in the scrotum. Once you get out of Earth's atmosphere, you're 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 infertile or uh, sterile, rather. Uh, but they, they, I don't. <laughs> I'd like to know. Do they t- uh, sperm from 66 mice were put in over 30 glass amputees back in 2012? Uh, scientists working on the experiment chose uh, the best ones to produce offspring. So they used uh, mice sperm, and uh, they they made pff, they made more mice. Voila! It survives in space. Look at that. So when we get to Mars, we're going to be fucking and we're going to be reproducing, and Elon Musk is going to get his colony. Is that is that what I'm gathering here? Yeah, that's exactly what you're gathering here. I just feel bad for the astronaut that got like tapped for that mission. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, <it's... ooh. laughs> we're gonna see a sperm survive in space. All right, finally. <laughs> hey, we're gonna get it for mice. Uh, it's a, a lot he, of uh. He, he drew. He drew the uh, small straw. Like the other. The others got to watch monkeys prostitute themselves. It's kind of <laughs> fuck. Sounds like he. Sounds like he drew a thousand small straws. <laughs> Oh, freeze giant samples from 12 mice were shipped uh, to ISS uh, in August 4th, 2013. Ident- identical samples were kept on ground in uh, some city's name, I can't pronounce, Japan, uh, conditions that mimic space. Uh, the scientists shipped the, sa- the same samples back to space nine months in a study to see if it was working correctly, which it was. So, yeah, under the microscope, these little creepy crawl. I always think of the opening scene from Look Who's Talking. That's just That's me. All I ever think about. <laughs> <laughs> Glad, and it's I get around by the Beach Boys is playing. <laughs> if you know the movie that well, um, so yeah, man. Uh, I mean, I don't know if this is any big. I I would like to show you this though. Okay, don't know if this is going to be the deal, but um, this is one of the photos from uh, the, the, uh, this news column. So 
obviously it's like okay yeah they're gonna have sex in space and oh, then yeah. the females oh, yeah, wear a very really revealing futuristic uh spacesuit that shows off everything i guess if you're gonna get it in oh, yeah you gotta you gotta uh gotta be able, gotta be revealing Wait, wait, scroll down, scroll down, because without reading and only using the pictures, Gosh. to me it looks like that's how many bottles of beer you have to drink to get the, get the sperm into the female. And look, by the way, you're you're complaining about the UK uh, websites. Look at this little uh, featurette down here to the right with the naked chicks climbing rocks. Oh. Might as well just leave that up for a while. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. You're right. <laughs> About to see if sperm survives in some sweatpants. You know, <laughs> I don't know how far in we are, uh, but this probably won't be a, our favorite episode that lands with women listeners. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. What are you talking well, about? Ac- Girls, get up into space. According to our statistics, uh, you know, that's a 75-25 split, and uh, I will take the 20, 75 over this 25. That's fair. Is that wait? Is, is that legitimate, our uh, our? our statistics for the show i actually think it's 66 33 but um again i'll still we take round this. yeah we we're, we're pretty well rounded yeah whatever yeah. sperm's gonna survive in space uh, they should be happy no that's great because i feel like what they're gonna do is bottle of man juice and then uh they're gonna you know take them where they're going and then they're gonna put them together and then they're gonna put them in some weird bio-organic fallopian tube and they're going to start uh, making more of us. The human race is going to survive in some weird, fantastical way. And I don't know if that gives me hope or not. Up <laughs> Sometimes with, I just wish the sun would burn us off and be done with it. Up with hope, down with dope. It probably should. I mean, it definitely will eventually. Maybe we won't be here. I think we get asteroided maybe. Uh, asteroid uh, le- yeah, collides with Earth happen. prior to uh, the sun getting Either that out. or like we legitimately burn the shit up and we start like an ice age and just whatever happens happens yeah see that would be my uh, my vote like we get it's just too many too many people uh, you get to around I think what I think I read is that or like mass famine yeah you, you know know thir- I mean? 13 billion people we just don't have enough resources to feed everyone now, well, we do. We just don't like people got to get paid for it. So, and if yeah. not, then we just throw it away. Yeah, yeah. yeah, dude. I I read as I was actually prepping for Fun Fact Friday. Did you know that you can fit the entire world's population inside of the state of Texas, and you still have like enough room, like el- you have elbow room. You have like three hundred feet between each person. Like that's a lot of feet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that's uh, that that's, so we're not as overpopulated as we think. We just like, like Alan said, with our um, our capitalist resources, we just don't have enough to go around. Yeah. No, I mean to get not to everybody. We still but have enough to go around. We just of... don't. Well, like, well, oh, yeah. <clears throat> to get it to poor people in Africa, somebody's got to pay to ship it there, and well, I'm not paying for that shit. So throw it away. Get it. Burn it. We'll be fine. But definitely get rid of those fucking like nineteen and zero New England Patriots shirts. Get them to fucking Africa. Yeah. <laughs> Super Bowl champions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> By the uh, way, they're not they're not allowed to do that anymore. They're not allowed to send them the uh, the 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 rejects the uh, the non winners anymore. And I think it all has to do with internet memes, and that, that's it. I don't. There's no other functional reason. Because it's cloth in the shape of shirts, and there's no reason why you shouldn't send them to poor kids who can't fucking clothe themselves. Yeah, the digital divide still exists. They, they're not. First of all, they don't get the internet, so they're not seeing that they're being memed. Second of all, you can flip that shit inside out, or I don't know. I know they're poor, but there's mud, there's magic markers, there's fucking sharpies. Do you know? Like, just graffiti it up a little bit. I just love how NFL, like Alan said. NFL licensing is preventing thousands of children from having clean clothes. Yeah. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. who's paying for that shit? Nobody. Burn it. Burn that shit. (laughs) Actually, you know what? Uh, Recycle the cloth. Make it for next year's uh, Super Bowl champs. Look, look, if we don't make 300% margin on this Gildan fucking T-shirt, you burn that motherfucker. (laughs) Don't you give it to anyone who could be less fortunate. That's outrageous. 
Or, one, of, one of my favorite. Uh, they've made a. It's like. Uh, have you guys seen Ch- the Change My Mind meme? Yeah. Now, yeah, yeah, now yeah. you can you can make your own. <clears throat> have you ever seen? Okay, Steven Crowder. Yeah. There's a meme, and I've seen probably a dozen of them, but there's one that came to mind, and it's a young African kid crossing his crossing his arms, looking up at a what seems to be a white woman, kind of like, "Are you kidding me? Have you seen this?" Yeah. Right, the, the one that I the one that oh, I, yeah. the one that I enjoy is so. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that y'all y'all shit in clean water? Yes. <laughs> that was. <laughs> That's so oh bad, but it, 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 it really, I mean, it's funny, but it also ah, it makes you think, made me think. Yeah. No, oh, 100%. I mean, the, the, the only reason that Pakistan and India are fighting is because there's one clean river running through from Kashmir. That's it. That's why that whole fucking amazing song from Led Zeppelin exists. Ba-da-dum, da-da-dum, da-da-dum, da-da-dum. Because that's the only clean water. Lake Superior, thank God, it ended up in, like, Canada and America, has more fresh water than anywhere on Earth. Like, we're cool. Geographically, we're cool. We were born out of the right vaginas in the right ge- geographic region. End of story. That's true. And you, what's, uh, hold on, what, what's the, the, I thought there was another giant river in India that, uh, the one I'm thinking of. And I'm, Ganges, I, Ganges, yeah. Ganges. So they, they show like people enjoying a summer day, you know, uh, uh, middle class Indian people getting down, to, you know, swim trunks, swim trunks that are not necessarily swim trunks, but like khakis that have been ripped in half, or or uh, some denim, and you know, diving, Jordan, get you know, Jordan, Jor- Jordan it into the the Ganges on a on a super hot you know summer day of like 110 degrees because it does get fucking scorching there. But you also see from some of these videos or photographs, like just p- p- plastic, just floating down. Yep. Just, just gobs of pollution. Just bloop, and oh, I mean, I get it. I would do the same thing if I were in their position. I got to cool off. I don't give a fuck. <sighs> Not just that. They, they be found, like bringing their cows down and shit. Like it's wild. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> that, that river's crazy. And they're getting knee high so they can take a dump and take a shit and take a piss and then uh, really, and then like, there's wash the wash the whole channel you know just give it a, yeah. give it a good rundown <laughs> and then there's oh, crematoriums your, your right channel. up the way <laughs> yeah just yeah your channel yeah get on in there oh well, and you, I remember you had brought it up about the, them fighting I I th- didn't wasn't it like ten years ago where Pakistan and India within a week showcased that they bo- they both have nuclear weapons. Was that, yeah. that right? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was like within seven days, they were the two newest uh, countries to be like, yep, we now have nuclear arms. Well, oh, not to get too deep into uh, the geopolitical chess game that exists, but uh, the guy who gave uh, both of them the uh, yellow cake uranium to make that happen is the same guy we pinned for Iraq. And so, you know, we kind of had like, a we're like, oh, we got a lead. And then, yeah, and here we are. 20 years later. Yeah, we got to leave. That was 20 years ago? I thought it was like 10. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, 2003 is when we invaded Iraq, so. <laughs> yeah. So you bought some yellow cake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sounds delicious. <laughs> so, don't drop that shit. You're a doctor? <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm a doctor. Look at this. Hell yeah, I'm a doctor. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I got it wrapped up in this special CIA napkin. <laughs> 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 oh, fuck. Good stuff. Now listen up, fellas. Do you know the statistics on unprotected sex? Men are three to five times more likely to bust early. Don't be a pump and dump. Wrap it up. Now, back to more of the Middle Class Holes. Welcome back to the Middle Class Holes, Mer Allen Fox. Man, I don't know if you got. can you guys see this shirt? Mur, do you know what, or Alan, you know what that is? Yeah, the Flying Dutchman. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, man, I yeah. did this. I got a kind of a twofer going on. I got the Flying Dutchman because I am a Dutch soccer fan when I'm not rooting for the United States in the World Cup. And then I also got the Titleist hat on. It's, it's a good sports month, man. God, it's a good. You got, it really you got, is. You got Euro going on during the day. And now streaming. If you're working in your office or working from home, you can watch it. If you have streaming, you can watch it from your laptop or your phone. Uh, baseball's in full swing in the U S open this weekend. And once I think almost within a week, once Euro's done, 
Uh, do we not? Do we get the Olympics, or is that a little bit more of a? Yeah, I believe the Olympics does come right after it. Oh man, man. Are they still doing that? I mean, I know the the Japan saying like, yeah, fine, we'll do it, but no fans, and I don't feel like they've made a final determination on that or not. I, I I haven't heard otherwise, so I'm going to go with yes. I haven't heard any. Uh, I I know I did know that they there were talks of boycotting it. To what extent and why I don't know. Now, did they try? Did they try to boycott every every Olympics? Yeah, doesn't it seem like every yeah. fucking summer or winter Olympics is like no, no. Yeah, they do. They that's make how... they make monkeys prostitute themselves. We're not going. Yeah, that's how. I mean, but see, that's how Israeli track and field stars get kidnapped and shit, man. So, like, it, it, it's the Olympics are a hot spot. It's a, it, it can, something can always happen, but I guarantee you, what will always happen at Olympics is STD sharing amongst nations. Uh, Absolutely, boy, they get they <laughs> I they get it in the the Olympic Village is no more than an upsprung fucking half assed. Carpentry job dormitory that some of some of the plumbing and AC and all that stuff works. It's just someone to lay their head down and get catch some Z's while they're competing at a world class level and you know archery, track and field, gymnastics. Even like some, but like some of the bigger like the NBA players don't stay there. But man, they have these. There's like people who are paid to walk around with condoms. Just like it. You're making sure, making sure you're up. Here's my here's my thing on that. My problem with this is one day the earth is going to need to be repopulated with the best genetics humanly available. And the Olympics seem to be the place where like, fuck away, friends. You know, the only people that are at quote unquote risk are the women who have to carry the child. OK, because it changes their bodies and yada, yada. Got it. Get it. OK, you can make that determination on your own because you're a, a free willed lady. Now, here's the thing. Um, I would assume that with that in mind, that the only thing the condoms would do would be to stop any kind of diseases of uh, like venereal diseases, sexually transmitted diseases. These people get tested like every three days for anything. Are they only testing them for performance enhancing drugs or are they also testing them for, you know, like, hey, just let you know you got the clap. Like, I mean, and if that's off the table, getting a venereal disease of any kind, let them bang it out, man. Let's create super athletes. Most of them are going to be American in one way or another. So let's get them out there. Well, that's, I think, home. maybe maybe you're going to run into the logistical problem 18 to 25 years down the road, or even, you know, more for some of these people who take care of their bodies and are world-class athletes into their late 20s and early 30s, where, uh, you know, they're going to they're gonna need to decide which nation they're representing. You know, there's mm-hmm. going to be some tug of war. Could be some some you know some long hats draped over the eyes. People pissed off like no, he went with Sweden, and not Algeria. That dumb bastard. What the fuck's his problem? <laughs> Damn Swedish no! Algeria, eh? No, he's shooting. <clears throat> he's going to be an archer for New Zealand, and not Canada. The fuck's his problem? We'll claim him anyway. It doesn't matter what they. It doesn't matter. What they claim, it matters what we claim. I like how you immediately like, go, hey, go to the rock, uh, the, the rock excuse. It doesn't matter. It doesn't <laughs> matter what you say. You can say you're from Cambodia. We all know your dad's American. Right. You're ours. Magic yeah. getting all hyped up about, like, you know, your favorite pair's fucking synchronized swimming couple or some shit. Like... <laughs> imagine just being an olympic sports fan like not just being a sports fan who watches the olympics is like this is cool look at that like that's the thing that people do but like knowing the olympics getting super hyped about like skeleton and shit in the winter you know just weird shit <laughs> yeah here's the thing though i i feel like nobody's really uh, if they're smart they won't claim the other country because nike doesn't like to pay that nike money out to the old cambodians they like to pay that money out to the old Americans. So when you're making that determination, it's like, ah, uh, where are my endorsements coming from? <laughs> Not Cambodia. Okie dokie. They they already pay money in Cambodia, and that's all they're willing to spend. Yeah. And they stuck- make 35 cents a, a, a read from this yeah. uh, this sweatshop. Yeah. And these they, no. they don't get the goddamn uh, a hand-me-down uh, fake-ass Super Bowl winner T-shirts anymore. What the fuck's that all about? <clears throat> no, he, you gotta 
that that sport cracks me up. So you get okay, Bob sledding two and four. I get it. Okay, so then they go. Uh, but what's uh, they, they go luge, right? Luge is on your back. On your back, and then someone was like, you know, we just ought to invert this. Just, just go, go down forward, face first. Yeah, dude, skeleton's my favorite. I, I, I always thought I'd be. I, I always thought I'd be a good bobsled team member because I'm tiny, but I'm I'm fairly powerful and fast, and I feel like I could have been a good driver because I mean, let's be honest, all you're doing is memorizing three, two, one, left, three, two, one, right, three, two, one. Fuck, we fucked up. I forgot. <laughs> but skeleton seems like the most pure form of it. How do you go fast on a sled on a hill? You get running with the sled in your arms and you dive forward and you go. So to me, if we're talking about timing, sledding, that's it. Yeah. Skeleton is the one. And it also, it, 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 uh, it's, it's the perfect storm of athlete and psycho. There's a couple others. With, like the long jump. What's the, the long, uh, we're, we're getting into Winter Olympics because that kind of lends yeah. itself more to, more to psycho acts than, than the summer. Although like pole vaulting and a few yeah, others. Winter Olympics are, as well. Or like cross-country skiing with the shooting. Like that shit's bonkers. Like, I I mean I that's uh, the, the biathlon that the winter biathlon honestly that is, yeah, one the, of my favorite yeah. sports. I I because Absolutely. I think after you have like exhausted your fucking body cross country skiing, now you have to be still and accurate. You know, anytime the commentary involves them giving me your their heart rate, I'm fucking here for it. <laughs> yeah, They're yeah. like check him out. He's fucking his heart's beating like a fucking thoroughbred at the Kentucky Derby. He's now he's got to shoot this target. Your homeboy's like, oh, oh, fuck. Like, yeah. It's just insane. I enjoy it. It's just, it's why the fucking Olympic sports are insane to me. Yeah. But it, <laughs> yeah, I, I do, I do feel like summer Olympics are like a better barometer of what the human athlete is capable of. But like the winter Olympics are like, okay, let's throw a little wrench in here. <laughs> yeah. Let's add some snow. And some discomfort and see right. what they're able to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to get you in a six and a half foot long, three to four and a half inch wide skis. And we're going to get you going down with no poles. And then we're going to we're going to shoot the ramp off in an angle. We're going to see how far you can go down. That's that's wild. Now, the, the one thing that pisses me off that that's judged, right? It's not just distance, but there's also a form thing to it, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. it doesn't matter how far you. Well, the the distance does play a a larger factor, but you're not going to get that far unless you have proper form. Hey, listen, I learned that I can design your skis like wings of an airplane. You must strap them on. <laughs> that shit. That that is absolutely bonkers. I and I do. I I like that sport. I mean, there's not, not many of the winner. I, I don't like the the ice dancing. I think's fucking whack. The dancing. I'll... Well, I mean, the dan- I, I don't know. The figure skating. I, I, there's there's an element that the dan- I mean, not saying like it's easy. It's just like all right, we're gonna we're gonna tango, but with skates on. Like why? Why? What? They're just failed figure skaters who who resorted to that's, dancing. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, you're not, yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, can't really say much there. <laughs> that's that's all. I told you they're all fucking crazy. That's all. What, what, they're all, all the fucking <clears throat> Olympic sports are nuts. What do you guys gravitate to in the uh, in the summer games? You like the swimming? You like the track and of course, field? Do you like uh, some of the other shit? More of a track and field guy personally, but yeah, yeah. I mean, track and field just because. I mean. You're stripping away everything, and you're seeing what the human animal is capable of. Okay. You know, with the the hundred, the two hundred, and just the, the relays. Um, what else is what else is a good summer? Yeah, the swimming, and I mean, it's the only time you should care about swimming. I mean, Michael Phelps really helped out too. Uh, yeah, unless you're before not, that, Michael Spitz. Yeah, there's been some females along the line too, and and some even you know recently, but but. <clears throat> um, yeah, and the, the swimming's fine. I there's a lot there's a lot of the track and field stuff. If there's a good basketball game, like if UFA UFA not UFA USA is playing Spain, I'll watch it. Or uh, like um, I was going to say Yugoslavia, that doesn't exist anymore. Um, but I, but anyway, I really like men's and women's indoor volleyball. 
and here's the reason why you're getting the women's side you're getting like five foot eleven to six foot four the men you're getting like six two to six eleven people who absolutely like it's almost like someone uh, some mad doctor put springs in their achilles tendons like, okay you now have a gazelle for achilles thank you Doing these people are jumping god no it's a, it's absolute freaks absolute just like freaks of nature that's why i like watching that sport no i no the, the volleyball because it's so fast yeah like, it, it's it's at a level you know the guys at the ymca could only dream to <laughs> yeah, be at yeah, yeah. And, and no it, it really it really shows you what what human beings are capable of in an organized fashion like i mean honestly man and not just because of the glorious brazilian asses that you get to see but the beach volleyball what a glorious yeah. add on yeah. to olympics man like you're getting eye candy you're getting like athleticism i mean you're seeing shit like seeing them dive past the line and making those saves like completely outstretched and popping it back for the i yeah. mean and it's a two person thing i mean it's no that that's yeah oh, Dude. i forgot about that Oh man, please! Summer Olympics needs to happen. Daddy needs some couch time. <laughs> Dude, I I walked on a beach a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, "This <laughs> sucks." I was like, "This is this is terrible." Like, and then people like run on it for like exercise or just their leisure. Like, no, it's fucking terrible. It's no. Nope, and so you're right. I'm with you. Fucking mad respect for beach volleyball. That shit's exhausting. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I my uh, my my grandfather in the town that uh, well the, the town that my mom grew up in, in a small uh, small town in like southwest Iowa, Creston. My grandfather later on he used to uh, he donated money to uh, the local community college uh, for their volleyball team, and we went. I was probably like 25, 24, 25, and we went to a practice, and uh, I was like, oh. I see why you donate. <laughs> it's, yeah, I get it now. <laughs> Good for you, old man. All Good subject. For you. But did you ever have that guy? I don't know if you were because you're where we're like four year, four school years apart. So like, yeah. I, I just remember in middle school. There was this guy. He was a one man show, and he came in and he would like play both in he did it in high school and he did it when I was in middle school and he would play the entire volleyball team by himself he got he got the three hits for himself and he would play against the entire volleyball team and win because he was that good did you ever have that guy no no we never they never subjected us to that bullshit oh well he was a meth head and he told <laughs> after he got done Solid. he explained to us that the only reason he was able to do that is because he got off of drugs and I just remember thinking like yeah but the drugs got you here. <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs> well, yeah, you got off the hard shit. Now you're on just some some regular speed. Look at you. Hey, did you guys watch? Uh, I was watching this. I watched this docu series. Uh, speaking of volleyball, it is instilled, and we we're we're, we're cult followers. Like, well, no, we're not. Sorry, we uh, <laughs> nope. We're not. We're, 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 not, we're not members. members. Yeah, we're not members. We just appreciate the art. Yeah, I think we're cult enthusiasts. Is, is what we are. That yeah. yeah. Um. So this uh, HBO series uh, called The Vow. Did you guys watch that? No. Oh man, you ought to. So it's Nixium or Nixvium or whatever. Uh, but they they do play a lot of volleyball. It's kind of the recreational. This is this is how we uh, stay in shape. This is how we you know we talk, we communicate, we we build as a team. And really, it was just a, uh, from what I gathered, it was a scenario where this guy Keith Ranieri uh, could get get the uh, the broads in little shorts and then kiss them all at the mm-hmm. end. And that's how he didn't. They didn't shake hands every time these people left. They kissed on the lips. Like thank you. Uh-huh. Yeah, and they never thought it was no. This is how we build. This is how we become one. Is that what... See, that's why we... I don't know about y'all, but, like, that's why I could never be in a cult. I think we've said this multiple times, but, like, there would always come that, that small task that would be like, no, 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 I'm not doing that. That's that's cult stuff. Like, nope, I'm out. Yeah. 
Well, like, I, most of the cults I've seen, I don't know why you'd want to be a man in the cult. I mean, you're just a, such a cuck. Like, you gotta, like, you gotta be second fiddle to everything. That's like, true. Uh, yeah, like, I can see women joining a cult. You're, like, worshipped and praised, and if you get some from them, then, then you're the number one, you know? Like, but yeah, but everybody else, it's like, if you're a dude in a cult, you're a well, pussy. That's unless, that's unless you're the lead dude. Yeah, but you're never the lead guy. Because you don't do Join like the cult, like I'm gonna be the lead guy one day. No, you're just, not. Just start it. Well, I mean, you could. I mean, if you start it, I respect you. But if you don't, then you're just a fucking. Twat. Wait, wait. Well, you, then... you respect people that start cults? <laughs> More so uh, than extent. the joiner of the cult. I'm with them. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. If if you're the if you're the if okay if you're a dominant male and you convince. Jesus Christ, this is gonna. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm with you because like, all right, Waco. I don't know. If the the dramatization was as accurate as they made it, but I'm going to use that as our example. That, that guy started a whole thing, and hey guys, uh, I'm going to knock up your wives. Have fun with that. And they were yeah. like, I mean, it's for the good of the group, so it's fine. Uh, see, yeah, that's some that yeah, that's some cuck shit for lack of a better term. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so in a way, you have to respect the. Uh, the impressive amount of manipulation that a, a human being is able to conjure, and the, 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 good, no finish. Sorry, the, the, just the kind of psychology, yeah. the superior psychology, amateur psychology, by the way, that it takes to convince, you know, pussified men to like steal their wives from them only for the pleasure source and not for anything else. Yeah, like at the top of the show, we kind of discussed how hard it is to get the booty. So you kind of got to respect the guy who brought in married booty and then looked their husbands in the eye and was like, I'm going to impregnate your wife. <laughs> and they were like, OK. <laughs> no, they, 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 were, they were probably more like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Even worse. <laughs> Yeah, makes makes sense. That makes sense. I the way you explained it. I will say the way we've talked about this, you guys ought to watch this. The Vow, HBO docu series. It is, I from what he sells that I can we can defeat sadness. We can defeat you know we can defeat people being upset and depressed and things like that through a series of. Um, you know, a series of trainings and they say, you know, uh, drills and et cetera, et cetera. And then you, they even have ranks. You get like scarves that have certain, uh, uh, color, color things that signify what rank you are, but it's all really what it's geared around is because there's a lot of men involved in, as well, but really what it is, is like, <clears throat> it's a, it's a guise. It's a, it's a smoke screen for him to pick out the women that he wants. And then he does this weird shit where he, he prefers his women super petite, so he has them slim down to to unhealthy levels to where they have to like they have to write down everything that they're eating, uh, and then get down to a certain weight before he's like, now I'm now I'm ready to experience you. Are you ready to experience me? This is we're not gonna have sex. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna mend. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is that like. Is that like the cone head thing with the fucking like, rings? Sense sensor you know, rings. Yeah. <laughs> Remember she puts it on Chris Farley. He's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I feel it's like. Uh, good times. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, again, coming from the sun. Great source. Andrew, thank you. Uh, camera Sly. <laughs> uh, this woman. Uh, is her, her name is. Wait. Camera Sly. No, that's actually the, the title. Sorry. I, I thought. Her name was Camera Sly. I was like, damn, she comes from a cult. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a proud catfish and never hide my fake teeth. But cruel trolls say my incredible transformation should be illegal. Let's go ahead and show you <clears throat> where the proof is in the pudding. Okay, so you have here a, uh, oh. I don't know what you call that, fake teeth. And then she uh. transforms into this. And that this is her form of cat, a catfishing. Uh, I don't have a name. I don't even. I don't know if it, Alicia looks like before she transformed, and this is what she looked like afterwards. God, dang man. Yeah, dude, she needs to work for Marvel Studios. I mean, like what she's done there is a work of art. It's like convincing somebody that your trailer park 
is, is like a fucking I, I, I don't I don't I don't know is a is a villa in Tuscany. I mean yeah. that's amazing what she that's amazing. The hair, the fucking earrings, oh, the makeup, that, the, the the this like the Bobby Valentine mustache esque, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> the brow there, Ugh. eyebrows, Man. yeah, eyebrows. Sorry. Yeah. Man. Yeah, no, I saw this, uh, I actually saw this on TikTok, <laughs> and, like, it's the whole, like, the video of her doing her makeup, and I was like, holy shit, that's sorcery. Uh, yeah, this is fucking crazy, and it sh- should, I don't think you can make it illegal, because don't basically all broads do this, she just adds teeth, you know what I mean? So, like, <sighs> it is what it is, she's just good at it, and... She was also like a meth head or something, right? So that's why she looks the way she looks and doesn't have teeth. Uh, Man, dude. Like, yeah, that last... Like, and she's just doing herself up. We see... Look, we let's not kid ourselves here. We've all seen a average to below average young lady go above average with some makeup and a curling iron and a, a fucking push-up bra. So... I mean, that's what's happening here. We're just more shocked about. Well, that's why last week, Wes, when we were talking about the uh, 53-year-old chick who got tasered in the titties, and you were like, oh, oh, never mind, her mugshot. I'm like, yeah, she looks pretty good, even without makeup in her mugshot. That's what the day of going around flipping tables at the old Outback Steakhouse. This chick, good God, she looks like she was married to the meth head who was playing volleyball at the middle school to tell me not to do drugs. And, and, and I mean, what does she do though? What is she getting from these guys? It says catfish. I mean, she's going out on dates with these guys, or is she just getting like OnlyFans money through the internet because it's working? And I, I don't know, is it false advertising, or should the blame be placed as a class action lawsuit against uh, Maybelline and L'Oreal? Well, first of all, she looks like. Do you guys remember "Don't Be a Menace"? Yeah. Yes, not as well as you do. I guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> There's the scene where the the, uh, the 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 brother who's like uh, who has adopted his African roots who sees that really ugly white girl and goes, "My milk of magnesia." That's who she looks like. <laughs> okay, yeah, I get <laughs> I, I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so yeah, I, I mean, should it be illegal? No, I don't know. But you I mean here's here's another thing too. <clears throat> At our fraternity's twenty year event in Hagerstown, um uh, a couple brothers uh, were getting a late night snack at uh a Waffle House and there was a two two females outside, one of which was uh twerking, and a fraternity brother of ours was like, Damn, look at that. Oh fucking oogling over it and it turned out it was a tranny. <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to comment after this. Uh, I wasn't there. I heard. I heard about such activities. <laughs> such activities or that activity? Hey, I just said such activity. I'm staying out of it. <laughs> what do you mean? What, what are you, like, what are we supposed to not comment on? Am I crossing well, a line you're not, here? You're, you're not allowed in this era to not find transsexuals. Uh, attractive, if yeah, in say, fact, I think just the use of trannies might have been. An issue. Yeah, you might. I don't. I don't really know though. I like that's one gray area that okay. your boy ain't that woke. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, there. I'm not there yet. I mean, I'm fine with it. Like, I don't give okay. a fuck. Do you? But like, I don't right. understand it all yet. Like, I haven't. Well, let me ask. Crash course. If, okay, let me let me let me disclaimer this. Okay, if 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 I offend anyone by the use of what I just said, I apologize in my own ignorant way. Uh, that person was a transsexual. I was not there. I did not witness it. All I know is that my buddy was watching the booty bounce and he was aroused and it had been brought to his heterosexual mind attention that it was actually a man disguised as a female and he instantly regretted it, paid his tab, got the fuck out of there. He was watching the booty bounce and then one of his other brothers was like, I think I saw a testicle. And everybody, and, and everybody was like, "Let's get the fuck out of here." Uh, 
<laughs> I don't I, again. I was not there. I'm just assuming that's how it went down. Fuck, man. <laughs> Mid beer. <laughs> oh, I thought we'd do this joke. This show to have big jokes. So, sorry, Wes. <laughs> just in a drink, Well, let me. Okay. But yeah, I I feel a theme is occurring in the show here. So like, um, okay. So doesn't everybody misrepresent themselves in some capacity, some more than others? Like when you're going out on that first date, you obviously present yourself in a, a from a um, psychological standpoint, uh, from an emotional standpoint. You definitely show the best of you. You and en- you you enhance. You kind of put steroids to your personality. And so isn't that a misrepresentation? So all this chick is doing is finding vapid men who are only concerned about looks. And she's just, whoop, I'm going to turn the contrast up on this picture. And this is what you get. Do you like what you see? I do. Yeah. What would you like from me? I want this. Okay, I will give you this. And then she turns the contrast back down. All of a sudden it's like, ah, there's a <laughs> testicle bouncing. <laughs> I'm sure through that, that double playing gla- double pane glass at uh, the Waffle House, and through his drunk eyes, uh, while he was like blasting through waffle after waffle, that it may have been you know slightly attractive. You know, there may have been a light, not a light. I don't know. I have no idea. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, at every first date, I'm I'm clean. I'm polite. I smell good. I tuck my shirt in. I pull the chair out. I pay for everything. I get the Uber, and I don't even try to kiss you. When you go home, yep, that's me. Just shake your, just shake your hand. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you for a nice evening. Perhaps here's we could do card. this again sometime. Here's, if, here's my card. If, uh, if you're interested, my card. Shoot me an email. I got actually, a QR code. I, yeah, I actually have a, a scheduling tool at the link on there. So just go on there, pick a, pick an open slot. We'll, we'll work in. Hey, and if by chance you listen to podcasts, don't listen to the middle class holes. Just steer, steer clear. Don't listen to whatever the name of this episode is because you might not like us. <laughs> oh, shit. Before we get to uh, three and out, it had been brought to our attention by our good folks at uh, Fox News. Our good old feller, 40, was it? No, our, good, our good old feller. What the hell does that even mean? Uh, our 54th president. <laughs> 45th. I know. 40, 45th. Oh, the booze is caught, kicked in, Alan. He's right where we need him to be. It's where, yep. Nope. He's oh, going to take that. his fake water. Here he goes. It, it, it's just fucking White Claw in there. He gray. just put it in there. It's, it's, it's White Claw and grain alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I call it uh, Grain Claw. It's, uh, it's a mix that I grain concocted. Claw. Um, <clears throat> so Don, Don Trump uh, has admitted defeat. Uh, albeit the quotes were relatively, uh, I don't know, kind of, I, I still feel that it was a rigged election. I still feel, uh, you know, but I want him to do well. Uh, I don't know, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, does this shock you? Does it shock you now? Here we are we, about nine months post-election that Donald Trump, former president of the United States, says, okay, I lost. Alan, I'll let you begin. I mean, yeah, it's a little shocking. I don't know. He's he's a fucking enigma, man. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I knew Murrah's going to love that. But, like, yeah, he just, he goes on, like, I, I mean, he's definitely, like, manic and fucking crazy. So, like, everything we had heard leading up to the, to this was him being, like, madman in the bunker, being like, we definitely fucking got we're, we're about to release fucking the my pillow guy's evidence. It's about to be huge, and then like somebody talks him off the ledge, and he's like, "Yeah, no, man, we we lost. It's fine. I mean, that fucking guy cheated, but we still lost. You know what I mean?" Uh, I think more than anything, I don't know. Has anything come out about Arizona yet? I have a feeling that even the fucking crazies in Arizona are gonna be like, "Yeah, we ain't find nothing." Uh, <laughs> and then so he was just like, "I'm gonna get out in front of it." And so when it comes out, he's going to be like, see, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. The, there was a, they, they hand counted, uh, they hand recounted 2.1 million votes in the state. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's how they got to the, to where they're at. Yeah. Here's the thing. Donald Trump, the grifter that is Donald Trump, mm-hmm. he does read the room. Okay. You may not think that he reads the room well, 
but I think he reads the room better than most. And it's like a cocky stockbroker where they're like, dude, this this thing's this thing's tanking, man. We gotta sell it. Don't sell it. Watch this. And then all of a sudden it comes back. He's got this little he's not afraid. And so I think what's happened is he knows that he has solidified that bottom of the barrel base. They're not going anywhere. I've kept the grift alive long enough to where they the conspiracy theorists think I'm the president. Then he's like, there's some guys on the fringe that I can keep if I don't go full crazy. Okay? So he's like, all right, I've got some folks that are just above the fray that are about I'm about to lose. So let me now admit it. And then everybody above the fray is like, if this motherfucker would just admit that he lost, maybe I'll vote for him again in 24. And then he's got the group of people that are like, no way I'm ever voting for Trump again. But he sees how the Biden administration is going with Harris fucking up down in fucking South America, Biden not remembering shit, getting fucked over by reporters talking about Putin. And he's sitting there, he's rubbing his hands together. Okay, now I just need to not be crazy again. And so he says, yeah, I think we lost. So all of a sudden, he doesn't sound as completely insane. He's grabbed the hold, the iron fist grip, the bottom of the barrel. So he's got about 25% of his voter base. And now he can, all he's got to do is get 50%. And I think he thinks he's got it. So it's like, all right, now it's time to admit it. And it's like, sell the oranges, sell the oranges. The frost is thawed, sell the oranges. You give the man a lot of credit, you know. I give you credit for giving him that much credit. Uh, so that's – I don't really know much more to say other than that. I mean, it's going to look nice. Thanks, Don. Thanks for telling us what we already knew. Right. Uh, the glaring... I, hope you, I hope you fucking go away. Uh, okay, but Wes, am I wrong? Uh, no, no, no you're, not, not... you're not wrong because I I have held this 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 belief since 2016 that – Don Trump is one person. Okay. It's not Don Trump's the problem. Don Trump is not the, well, he is a problem. He's not the problem. The problem is the people that vote for him. Now the problem is that the people that sat there and rallied and fucking rioted and stormed capitals and protested and pissed and moaned and whined and screamed and said, no, the system's broken. They fucking, these guys, the, 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 the machines are rigged. The U.S. Postal Service is behind it, and they were dumping shit in the fucking dumpsters. And now he's like, we lost. Well, he's got a point. I'm still behind him. I'm still behind him. I, re- <laughs> I respect him for admitting it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, that's the problem. Those people are the fucking issue. Stop but acting like it, that. It, Educate yourself. But in, or- but in order to get those people back on your side... You have to hold the line until the line is about to fall. And then you're like, okay, yeah, we lost. And the, but, the, but they're like, you know what? God damn it. He held the line all the way up to the last minute. And then, but then he still retreated. But they don't think of it as a retreat. They think of it as, as him holding the line. Everything you just said, I agree with. But I think Don has this unique ability to know when to pull back. But the pull back is still a hold the line. Even though he still retreated, it looks to his followers like he held the line. And that's what he needs. That's what he thinks he needs to do. I think his handlers are clever. You know what I mean? It's not him. Honestly, I don't. I think it's all him. And I know you don't. I know you don't want to believe that. But I think it's all him. I think it's like I've read enough of like uh, various fucking reputable reporters from various outlets Getting their inside sources being like, listen, the guy's a fucking Looney Tune. He's an absolute egomaniac and fucking fucking uh, fucking want to be Hitler, Jason Miller and fucking Steve Bannon. And those fucking guys are like, let's pull some straight. Like it's I've, I've, I've said this before. It's a fucking Cheney Bush thing, except during Cheney Bush, they fe- they realize that experiment. You can't make the fucking guy pulling the strings, the vice president, because then everybody's like, guys. Come the fuck on. Look at that over there. Look at that. That's happening. Uh, so they were like, all right, we just got to hide them back here and let them pull the fucking pull the strings. Like I said, I think you give him way too much credit. He is a clever dude, but he is a fucking book idiot. He's a street genius. I'll give you that. Uh, but 
to do the things that are happening now, he needs people who have book smarts behind him because he's a fucking moron. Uh, but 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 I think he needs book smart people to pull off street smart maneuvers. Well, no, well, you need his street smart, charismatic, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you need him fucking. <laughs> you, you need him switching the cards around on a cardboard box in fucking Times Square. But you still need. You know, there's somebody behind him was like, "Hey, yo, go go. I'm gonna teach you this trick. Go do it on the fucking on a box in in Times Square." And yeah. then he's like, "Okay, yeah, that's fine. I, I, I have I, hand, I have hands that can lift cards." I have those. Uh, that's that's the equivalent. Like They're very that's small. Awesome. So don't give me a lot of cards. Yeah, don't give me a ton of cards. Yeah. In the uh, <laughs> in the infamous lines of a one David Saint Hubbins from Spinal Tap, there's a fine line between between stupid and clever. Very fine line. Don't ever forget that. Trump says he loses, and that, folks, is where we draw the line, and we jump into a little segment we like to call Fun Fact Friday. That's right, my friends. I have five fun facts for you fuckers right now. Brought to you by the Shin Splints Recovery Group. If you've been working out, getting yourself in some summer shape uh, right around this time of the year, and you've experienced a little bit of pain above your ankle and below your knee, there is a recovery group out there for you, and you can find them on Facebook, the Shin Splints Recovery Group. Let's start here. <laughs> It, it takes a lot not to mock them. Fun Fact Friday, your first fun fact for you fuckers on this Friday is, did you know a psychologist studied how wealth changes people by rigging games of Monopoly? Each game had one player that started with twice the amount of money, got more for pass and go, and could move further ahead than the rest. In every game, the privileged player became more aggressive and had less empathy for the other players. How appropriate moving on from Donald Trump. <laughs> so basically, the more you have, the more means you have to destroy others, the more you will destroy others, and the more aggressive and uh, bombastic you'll be about it. Does that surprise you? Nope. S sounds about right. Well, I, I'd like to know what, what, what age and education level were these people that he was using? These are like regular, regular middle-class Joes. Like, all right, look, uh, before you all know how to play Monopoly, but Gary over here is going to get a lot more money and is going to get uh, more rewards for passing go. We're going to stand behind this uh, one way mirror. And we're going to we're going to observe everyone. Is that is that how it went down? Uh, yeah, pretty much. It's, I, I think I think I assume it's Americans doing this mm -hmm. because it's an American game. I would assume that everybody would think like, nah, fuck that. I can I can. I can beat the odds. Like that's the American way of thinking. I can beat the odds. I'll take on this uh, this bombastic asshole. And then I, I guess what's funny about it is, is the person who got more money just like puffed their chest up and was just like, "Fine, I'll take the cheat code, baby." Yeah. Watch what I can do with this. Which kind of goes to show you that you know maybe wealthy folks aren't less empathetic. They're just monkeys with more chips, and they'll buy more. <laughs> Buy more poontang. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey, that shit. Now that actually makes sense. And, and not to not to suggest that I think that in this war room or game room or monopoly room that that the people with more money who are given more benefits were like, like ah, look at me, motherfuckers. Fuck you. Give me Pennsylvania Railroad or anything like that. But it, it, it could have been more joking or more uh, more civilized. But I guess it does it shock me. No, not really. Weirdly enough, I the, the human psyche doesn't shock me anymore. Uh, I don't know. You got so many planes of thoughts and 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 psychosis and and Freudians and beliefs and conspiracies. He's using terms. It's just saying words. Saying words. <laughs> <laughs> Those are certainly words. <laughs> But I did read more into this, and uh, one of the studies they did was to figure out, like, if women were more empathetic, and they wanted to check on, like, women's equality. Would women, since they've been fighting for this for such a long time, would they be better about it? And they gave the women more money, and they became they they became your very own monopolistic Donald Trumps <laughs> as soon as they got more cash than everybody else. Just fucking throwing the middle finger around. I win, bitch. Fuck. Whatever. Jerks. 
By the way, best game of Monopoly I ever played at, uh, Wes, was in your basement. And um, girlfriend at the time was like, oh, I can beat you Monopoly. I won before she got around the board four times. I got lucky as shit. I landed on Boardwalk and Park Place, bought them both, was able to start building houses and hotels. And then on her fourth time around, she landed on Boardwalk. I was like, you're done. And she flipped the fucking board, threw everything across her basement. And, and what did she? Uh, what did she say? Prior to you guys playing, I'll beat your asses. No, um, no, I would like, re- like monopo- rewind the tape. What <laughs> you you, uh, you you quoted her and sounded like she sounded. I don't remember what I just said thirty <laughs> seconds I'll be, ago. I'll be you me. <laughs> <laughs> exact quote. You nailed it. <laughs> Moving on. Did you know the World Wide Web was almost called the mine? of information or MOI, the information mine, T I M, or the information mess mesh, but investor uh Tim Burns Lee didn't think they had quite the right ring to them. So we went with the World Wide Web. Hmm. I, mean, I, d- I did not know that. No, I didn't. Um and it, it, it's it's we I wouldn't doubt that there were a lot of ideas battered around when this uh concoction started getting you know getting a full head of steam we were getting dial up internet and everyone was getting into chat rooms asking about age sex and locations and things like that um i but, uh no i i, I like uh i'm 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 certain in the war room of this there there were thousands of ideas battered around they came down to you know what you what what deemed it uh what, you know the, the few that you rattled off but no i didn't know that a few of those would some of those don't even sound that bad now that you say it yeah but now try okay in the radio world the worst thing they could have done to us was give us websites to read and this is before that the internet just filled it in for you the www trying to say that quickly cuz time is a commodity www Nobody wanted to hear www, so you had to learn to say www dot. Oh, yeah, and but That's otherwise, great. but here's the thing though. Otherwise, it would have been moi dot tim dot. See, tim might have worked because it could have been Tim Tim dot mm. the middle class. Old, you know, you know what I mean. But yeah, www. Thank God we don't have to say that anymore. Tim dot porn gape. Dot com. Did you say gape? I did say uh, gape. Uh, <laughs> did you know? Go to, go to subreddit. Go to subreddit. <laughs> Check it out. Nope. <laughs> did you know? Anything with the word gape in it, sir. <laughs> God, man, you are a deplorable son of a bitch. Did you know? Roosters left in a dark room for two weeks will still crow every 24 hours. A study found that their bodies have an eternal internal rhythm that tells them when it's morning. Even when exposed to artificial light, they were most likely to respond if the current time was near dawn. Jesus. In the, the two weeks? Yeah. Just yeah. goes to show you that a good cock knows when it's time to perform. <laughs> Well, knowing what I know about frog horn and leg horn, it doesn't shock me. I will say though that uh, what do you so know the... about frog horn and leg horn, as a matter of fact, <laughs> <laughs> don't mind me asking. <laughs> he was very uh, articulate. They spoke he well. His, he got his law degree from the University of Georgia. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do think uh, this was uh, this was an experiment, right? You yeah, say? they did. They, they basically they, they took roosters, you know, roosters cock a doodle do. Yeah, they um they kept them in a room in the complete darkness for two weeks, and they still crowed at dawn without seeing the sun. Right. I, this is okay. I'm not. I, obviously, there's been disastrous and uh, terrible experiments done to primates, but for those primates that were able to get uh, uh, prostitute themselves for money, okay, this rooster has to think he got slighted just a little bit. You know, hey, these monkeys are over here having sex for money. I get to, I get to figure out when it's when it's twenty four hours and cockadoo to do in a in a dark room. Well, to me, it just proves that, like, you know, it's amazing. All yes, you're of right. the ingredients. No, just all the ingredients built into our DNA. When people are like, "Why well, do that?" Like, well, why the fuck do you think he did that? 
like millions of years of uh, doing it every day the same way <laughs> forever, and you don't think it's you don't think that's burned into the cake? Yeah, like that's yeah. that's how things are. Yeah, I mean, think about this. Okay, if you guys don't set an alarm, what's the latest you wake up most of the time? Me? I, I mean, do you need an alarm to wake up? No. No. Okay. Do you have no. an alarm just in case? Do you have an oh yes. shit like uh, like okay, this is the last possible minute I can wake up. So you don't set one, Alan. I usually, I, I usually beat it. Okay. I usually beat my alarm. Like I'll wake up right before it. Typically, here's the thing: I will wake up before my alarm goes off, but then I need to set an alarm to make sure that I wake up in the twenty extra minutes that I have before the alarm's supposed to go off. So like if okay, so like my alarm, if it's set for five thirty, I'll wake up at five twenty five. No matter what. And then I'll say, okay, I'm going to turn my alarm off and I'll set it now for 5.55 to make sure I'm up by 6. Because if I don't, then I will sleep till about 7. And then I'll be late. If you don't wake up at 5.25 and 5.50, you won't. Is that what you said? Why don't you set one? I won't wake up. I won't wake up on time. I know, but I'll wake up before it and then I'll be like, oh, I got five more minutes. But that five minutes will turn into an hour if I don't. Okay. Wake myself up after that with the alarm. Fair enough. Nope. I just fucking wake up, bro. Kelly hates it. She absolutely I don't, fucking despises it. She's well, like, I guess the fuck it, out. My I'm point like, my point was cuz cuz I I get up around I mean, I have I have a 6:15 alarm. I'll either wake up just before it or uh it's not total shock. It's not not a total shocker. You know, when when the alarm wakes me up, I'm, I'm uh, like my body's kind of getting to that point anyway. Um, but no, to, uh, so yeah, you close the door on the rooster 24 hours later, he's cock a doodle doing. <laughs> Look at that, he's a smart cock, yeah. But, but I, I'm in the middle of my week off, and um, I'm now waking up at 10. Ooh, it must feel great. Where I normally wake up at 5 30. It must feel great. <laughs> well, sort of, I'm tossing and turning from like 6 to 10, but I'm still like laying in the bed. but yeah, I, 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 yeah, I don't know how it's gonna be on Sunday, <laughs> Sunday into Monday. It's gonna be a rough one. But did you know the man who invented the cubicle despised his own creation? Mm. Robert Probst designed the cubicle in 1968 to give workers more freedom. By 1997, over 40 million Americans were working in cubicles, and Probst said that quote. The cubicleizing of people in modern corporations is monolithic insanity. Those are big words. Yes, uh, they are. No, I mean, yeah, I could see how that would work. Because once you start penning people in, once he like saw it on a grand scale, he was probably like, ah, oh, fuck. I just made I just made human pens. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's what these are. Like you know, you, you know how they just feed pigs before they turn them to bacon. That's basically what we're doing with these humans, except we make them be productive. Yeah, <laughs> well, that that was actually pre-internet. Now, because in my opinion, the cubicles work because I don't want people to see that I have social media and ESPN and I'm streaming the U S open. Now they're like, Oh, we need open workspaces and we need to be everyone to be there and to be able to see what everyone's doing. We need your boss to be able to walk behind you. We need these rate, these desks, these ergonomic desks that can go up and down as you stand up and sit down. And it makes for a much more enjoyable workspace. Now to me, I'm like, hell yeah. Give me that cube in the corner. I don't want anyone to be able to see behind me. Nobody. I, 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 I worked in one cubicle for a few months, and I'm just like, how do people do this? Because, like, if I can hear what everybody else is doing, oh, I'm just like, bro. yeah, but it, it's a workspace where you can't use yeah, it. I, it was yeah, just, yeah, it yeah. was. No, I fucking right. I, not, a, not an environment for me. It just, it, 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 it X'd out so many jobs that I feel like I'd be capable of doing but incapable of sitting through an entire workday to do it. You know what, what kills me? Cause like we're getting back into the office now. Like we were, we had our sales meeting like in the office today and I was like, ah, fuck all these guys. Uh, <laughs> but we like our, all of our cubicles now, cause we consolidated our offices into this one office. Like all of our cubicles now are like half walls. Like they're not all the way up. So like, I can't really block myself out. And so like my only two options for setting up my screen was like, 
let my fucking manager look at me or like turn to the side. So I, tur- I turned it to the side, but I really don't like it. And I can tell you from experience that like I don't like getting on sales calls sometimes in in the group setting because sometimes you got to say some shit. You know what I mean? Like my, my, my manager might not find my tactics on the phone. OK, but like my customer finds them. OK, I just got to take that outside or something. You right. know what I mean? Like yeah. I be doing. In, your, in your situation, sometimes you got to talk shit. You got to be like, yeah, talk my shit. manager. My manager's guy's a freak, bro. He's, he's, he's a motherfucker, okay? He's not so this is what I'm going to do for you. Don't talk about this outside the corporate headquarters, but I'm going to give you this deal. And he, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, I, I, I feel for you, man. That yeah. sucks. Right. Yeah, just like, I don't know. I, I mean, not that I'm not embarrassed, but, like, everybody's got their own little thing, their style, their thing that they say to people. You know what I mean? And, like, I don't know. I've heard some outlandish shit, some, like, salesmen say some shit, and I've just been like... What'd you just say? Okay. <laughs> All right. You probably should have just did that outside, bro. Or like, we have a huddle room. Just go take a second in there. That would have been fine. Close that yeah. deal, my friend. But it seems, like, it seems weird to be talking about like fantasies right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> close them deals, girl. Like I said, close them. Get them, get them super closed. However, if it takes the champagne room to get the, the fucking hospital deal closed... <laughs> Hit the fucking champagne room. Let's go. I'll go with mm. you. But like, <laughs> take a couple spider fucking, monkeys while you're headed. Yeah, you might want to just take that one outside of earshot of management. That's all. <laughs> and finally, did you know smart people do more drugs, have more sex, and stay up late? Multiple studies have shown that night owls tend to be smarter individuals. People with an IQ of 125 or higher are exponentially more likely to use drugs and students at prestigious academic universities spend more money on sex toys than students at other schools. Hmm. We're the smartest show alive. That's kind of a, <laughs> kind of a Freudian uh, a belief there. Wasn't, wasn't that guy fucking tooting cocaine uh, fair amounts? I have to call shenanigans on this because I've never done a drug in my life. That's right. <laughs> See? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I feel like I'm pretty intelligent. Yeah, clean living on the middle class. Holes. Clean <laughs> living is the life for me, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Sober Sandy here. Well, you know what? You know what though? Okay, in in all reality, it makes more sense. That does make sense to me because usually the baseline story, like go back to like reefer madness and things like that, is it, smart people are like, wait a second. Am I really going to machete my whole family if I take a hit off this joint? <laughs> Am I really going to be able to get up off the couch after I eat a pound of sour gummy worms? Because the answer is no. <laughs> and so you're, you're questioning the hard line story, and then you're experiencing that for yourself because your mind won't allow you to accept the story that has been written for the masses. And I And so I think that's why smarter people tend to do all of these things. Your brain's always racing, so you're staying up later. Yada, 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 all the way down the line. Yeah. But do, you, do, you, do you not think it with uh, with Reef, Reef for Madness, you would have gotten a small constituent of uh, dumb people who were like, hell yeah, if I smoke weed, there's going to be a bunch of women who will be around me who want to smoke weed and have sex with me? Hell yeah. I'm in. Let's do it. <laughs> Give me a couple pounds. It's not really far off. Depends on the quantity of weed you <laughs> keep around yourself at any given time. <laughs> As that increases, see, and this is where we get. This goes back to weed. The weed inequality gap is is co- as correlative to the booty inequality a- gap. Mm-hmm. You know, the mm-hmm. guy picking up so a should... fucking dime bag from fucking Jerome on the corner is not getting the booty very easily. But you know, the guy who owns Culta. Uh, legally slanging fucking medicinal weed is probably laying pipe in his fucking Tesla. <laughs> so we need to give monkeys drugs and only open zoos after dark. That's where we get the most bang for our buck. <laughs> People it. should just let us do government at this point, right? Uh, like, we should just run for something. You mean? Like, I think we could all run for, like, some kind of town council or something. And, and get We're it. too like, smart for that. Like, <laughs> I would totally fucking blow the doors off of Eric Costello in a race. Like, I'm, I'm calling him right. Eric Costello, you don't listen to the middle class holes, but uh, councilman for our area, uh, I'm taking your seat, bud. We'll ping him. We'll ping him. Yeah. 
Yeah, I got skeletons in my closet too, America. It's fine. I'm a regular guy. I will regularly govern for you. <laughs> <laughs> and by that I, I mean <laughs> and by that I mean get greased by local fucking business owners uh and pr- pretty much just do what politicians do. I just but I'll, I'll be accessible. You can fucking DM me on Facebook. Uh I will be in South Baltimore complaints talking shit about one of the many ice cream uh, places in the neighborhood, whichever one doesn't have the flavors that I like that day is probably going to get some shit. Uh, <laughs> There's a fair <laughs> amount see, now, too. You. Look, yeah. Wes lives here, and he's like, I'd vote for that. <laughs> it's, it, it sounds like a good <laughs> uh, good campaign to me. It's a good <laughs> good platform. Hell yeah. Roll yeah, it up, buddy. dude. It's, roll I'll, it I'll up. patrol around to make sure your Amazon packages don't get stolen. That's going to be your campaign slogan. Roll it up. Vote for me. <laughs> Roll it up. (laughs) And that, my friends, is your Fun Fact Friday. Before we close out the middle class holes, I wanted to bring a segment that I thought was, I don't know, equal parts funny and equal parts tragic. Uh, Shelby Houlihan, uh, an American record holder in the 1,500 and 5,000 meters, is banned from running in this summer's Tokyo Olympic Games because of uh, anabolic steroids uh, that she tested positive for. Her claim, and she went on, she, I don't know if you guys read the, the it's not even. I did. <clears throat> okay, hold on. <laughs> you, you, you didn't even hear it. You read the whole thing. Fair enough. All right. Alan, I was going to ask you, what is a. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Sorry I prepped for the show. Is it, is it an Instagram post? Uh, not a tweet, but a, something you post on Instagram? Just yeah, a, what, what, are you asking like what it's called? Yeah, yeah it's, uh, I think it's just an Instagram post. That's fine. Okay, so she yeah, she goes on and, and, and it's like you know I've been running since I was five years old. I've dreamed of competing and breaking records and winning winning uh, winning medals. Blah 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 blah. And then she blames all of this on a pork burrito that she ate in Beaverton, Oregon, that probably may or may not have contained. Something that they called, I, I, damn it, I have to, oh, uh, offal, O-F-F-A-L. It's a awful. pig, awful, is that what it is? A pig organ Yeah, meat, it's awful. Uh, that has high levels of uh, nandrolone. And, okay, fuck, man, does this woman have a leg to stand on with this shit? I, I, like, I get it. And listen, man, pork burritos are beautiful. They are amazing. And it's not, <laughs> they're not even good. They're beautiful. I see that. I take a bite, I, I douse it with, and Murr, you probably know this, I douse it with like six or seven squirts of hot sauce, take another bite, six or seven squirts of hot sauce, say goodbye. Thank you for this. Yeah, and, um, but, yeah. pig offal is now the catalyst for an Olympic athlete not be able to compete in this summer's Olympic Games. Buy or sell. That's an ESPN zone. ESPN. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we're going to get copyright for that. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, call, I'm just throwing it out there. Um, I don't know. It seems cheap. It seems it definitely seems cheap. I'm not going to lie. Um, on her behalf, or yeah, uh, you yeah, saw it on her behalf. Like okay. the salted awful stuff. Like I mean, it's it's. I think it's called awful because it is awful. Because <laughs> um, like I think that was old timey shit. Like like you know, pre, almost pre spam. Where we were like, well, we can just ground up these pig parts and fucking turn them into a, a pig jam and tell people to eat it uh, with crackers and such. Uh, so, I mean, maybe if she has a delicate runner's constitution, maybe the fucking jellied up pig innards was not the best move uh, for her diet. I mean, you, you're saying that, uh, that that the onus is on the athlete to know what you're putting in your body. And if well, you're yes. going to put fucking pig organs in you... You yeah. you might run the risk. It's that, that like, I mean, I, like it's well, not are, even are, just pig are, organs. Like if you're like I'm going to eat a ham steak, I mean that's reasonable. Are pig if organs and like, ham steaks giving fifteen hundred and mid distance runners a, a leg up on the crowd? No, I don't think so. I'm not saying that. I'm just okay. saying that this one was dumb enough to be like maybe I'm going to eat something that might hurt me, and that's and, and that's what sounds like what happened right or did i misunderstand the no the story? no i, I, now, I she, she she ate she ate that I, I, well according to her she ate that i guess i i what i'm asking you is is the onus 
on the athlete to know everything that they're putting in their body. And after that, I don't care. If you ate a pork burrito that had awful, then that's that's your fucking problem. That's not ours. I mean, 100%. Okay. That'd be, that'd be like, well, you know, Sir Sergey had steroids in him. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's his fault, though. You know, there were steroids lying around. Could have got into something. Could have could have seeped into the water. Could have. Uh, no, no, sir. Could have. <laughs> you took steroids. Could have tri- tripped and landed ass first into a yeah. into an ice cube of steroids. Exactly. Like, <laughs> and I mean, most of these don't they have like dietitians and nutritionists and shit? Like, I think they're so. elite athletes. Yeah, man. But I'm a sucker for a food truck. If I see a food <laughs> truck pulled up outside of anything, I'm pretty much going to go up and be like, "What do you got?" Um. I didn't want to buy this, Wes, and then I read the story, and then I was like, man, I kind of buy it. Like, they're testing for so much stuff and on such a limited, tiny, insignificant level, and then she begged them to test her again. And if you're doing something like that to enhance yourself so much so, I would imagine that the second test is going to, you know, like, no, I had this fucking pork burrito. I swear to God, that's what was in this thing. Test me again. It's not in me anymore. And there were, and for whatever reason, they refused. And sometimes I feel like the International Olympic Committee, which is also as corrupt as any other government organization that exists out there, is like, no, because you're the best and we want to take you down. It's a bigger story if we take you down and we let other people compete in this thing. And I honestly kind of buy her story because I've heard about this in other sports where guys go to like Mexico And they have foods that aren't necessarily highly regulated, and they test positive for things. They have gotten to such a, I don't know, man, I blame it on the Russians. Like, that, they've figured out so many covert ways of getting shit in their system that they have to test for, like, things that you've never heard of. And so her thinking, like, oh, I'm just going to have a pork burrito. You'd never think that, well, you know that the stomach lining of a pig actually contains a substance that would be banned by the IOC. So you probably shouldn't have, you wouldn't know that. And so like her, her plead on Instagram convinced me that she's probably telling the truth. There's okay. There, there's gotta be third party to this, in my opinion, because I know I, I knew of a, a, a previous coworker who, uh, something happened at work. It wasn't disastrous. It was something that uh, protocol required this person to take a drug test, failed it. Uh, Turns out he ate a poppy seed bagel every day on his way to work and then had, had, uh, you know, small doses of THC in his system uh, and took it, took it to an arbitrator. And they were like, yeah, that's, that's, that's right in line with not a marijuana smoker, but, uh, but THC bagel ingester, if that's even <laughs> a spectrum on on the testing, but th- th- this is what I was told. So I'd like I, at th- at this level, at this fucking thing, like someone who's competing for the Olympics, and they say, "Ah, oh, nope, anabolic steroids." Like, no, I ate a pork burrito. There's got to be an arbitrator for that. There's got to be like yeah. some some. And they like, won't. All right, they won't. All right. What do you got? What do you got? Pork burrito. You got anabolic steroids. All right we're going to take this back and we're going to figure this out. And I, in the article that I read, none, none of that was described. It was, she's, she's on steroids. I ate a pork burrito. Fuck man. I ate a pork burrito two weeks ago, drunk walking home and fuck me. It was delicious. And I didn't play any better soccer or golf in the next two weeks. I actually got worse. So <laughs> does that make me, make me a bad human? Makes you a bad fifteen hundred runner. <laughs> I'm not breaking, not breaking any any world records at this point. But that, that's my that that's what I wanted to say about that. There's got to be a third party arbitrator on that. Yeah, and they wouldn't let her. They wouldn't let her retest, which gives me, which to me lends credence to my theory that the IOC is just being dicks because that's what they are. Yeah, and they've ruined the Olympics more than they've helped it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I get what you're saying, Alan, because I, I think part of it had to do with the fact that Major League Baseball players fucked a lot of this up. Like, oh, I will uh, know that. I, I was injecting vitamin B in my rear end. Like, what are you fucking, really? You were taking vials of uh, of, of ecto-goo from Ghostbusters 2 
and jam it into your rear end like this is vitamin b12 yeah vitamin b12 bro and like ah uh, yeah and i tested positive i had no idea like oh i uh yeah. i i was uh it was a cream and clear from a guy named victor mcconte uh yeah. and it, uh, i took a thing of deer antler spray and was just, like rubbing it on there like, you've never seen you've never seen dancing around a subject until you've seen a fucking dominican baseball player <laughs> dancing around how a doctor prescribed him a fucking diuretic in in the Dominican, you know, because he was feeling a little a little stopped up. But it has nothing to do with fucking masking the anabolic steroids that I've just used to gain another fucking pound of muscle mass. Like, nope. Not at all. Wouldn't no no chance Robinson Cano would do anything like that. Nope. <laughs> uh you see, if you see guys with just chin straps in 2021, that, those are your guys. The Dominican guys with the chin straps, they're fucking, <laughs> they're lighting it up. <laughs> but they're pork burrito eaters. <laughs> yeah, we're heavy pork, we're heavy on the pork burrito down there in fucking in Dominican, in Ethel. DR as they call it. Awful, awful. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. Well, folks, Alan, where can you find us? Hey, hey, whoa, 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 whoa! Breaking news. Breaking news: the old, the old, the old uh, email chain has changed. What do we have? Oh, I don't fucking know what it's called. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> That's, right. Hey, That's right. You, you do the normal breakdown, and I will tell everybody what the brand new, easy to remember, easy to type email address is. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, I saw, I saw ideas about it floating around. I have no idea. I've been out of touch this week, guys. So anyway, you can find us. On your favorite social media platforms, you can find us on Instagram, at Twitter. The handles are at MDL Class Holes. You can find us on Facebook, of course, we're the middle class holes there. And of course, for your listening pleasure, we are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Mer, what is our email? Our brand spanking new email address, which is easy to type and easy to remember, is tickleourtummies at gmail.com. Tickle our t u m m i e s tummies dot or at google dot com still fucked it up at but very easy to remember <laughs> at google dot com hey, hey just to, just email us at m l d c l s dollar sign holes at altavista dot com <laughs> you'll definitely get to us. <laughs> Tickle our tummies at gmail.com. If you'd like to get in touch with us, that's where to do it. So there's Hi. gonna be there's gonna be some ninety four year old woman named Meredith Clissel. She's gonna be like, What is this? What is this? <laughs> Who the fuck are these people? <laughs> I was, emails all to vistas. <laughs> I was actually going through my head of like who would actually try to use this email address, and I feel like we're going to get a lot of pet requests, <laughs> yeah. a lot of shelter dogs, right. tickle our tummies, Listen, or, uh. or or someone who uh, who has a small business who thinks this is going to be a great idea, and then it's like you, you bastards. You That's all I knew about it you, was that it had a variation of the word tummies in it because I was like, you guys were like, I don't know, is it possessive with this or is it I E S? Hey guys, this is plural. This is possessive. <laughs> uh, yeah, we we debated about that for ten minutes. Well, you know what what we gotta do. So we gotta we gotta engage with our audience now. Email us at tickleourtummies at gmail dot com. <laughs> that, that might even Alan might even think that's better than the old MDL. I can't wait to tell other people to email me there. Yeah, yeah. Send it over. Uh, send it over to the podcast email. Oh, yeah, what's that? Uh, it's tickle our tummies <laughs> at gmail dot com. <laughs> Look, bottom line is, I didn't believe Wes that MDL class holes or MDLS class holes or the MDL C or whatever was we taken tried everything. And then when I found out that he was not bullshitting and telling the absolute truth, I was like, all right, we got to come up with some nonsense that's funny and people will remember. And I, I for whatever reason, I typed in tickle our tummies and, and Google was like, yep, you're cool. You want that one? That'll work. That's all right. On original bastards. No one took Deal. that. <laughs> it's ours. 
All right, folks. Well, hey, listen, uh, we will not be with you next week, but we will be producing a uh, best of first half of 2021 with the middle class. So look out for bits like Bob Lazard, uh, uh, Governor Cuomo's daughter, diddling with a uh, with a security guard and Ice Cube's good day, things like that. Uh, we will. So we will be uh, putting out a show. Enjoy that. Uh, otherwise, take care and uh, email us to tickle your tummies and and uh, tickle, tickle your, our tummies. Tickle, spay, uh, <laughs> tickle spay your new tummies. To your pets. Yeah, spay the new to your pets. It feels, it feels like it fits there. <laughs> <laughs> good tag. Good, good.